Hi everybody, how are you doing? Hi. You good? <laughs> I give nice. you the amazing Winnie Harlow. Who's with us today. <laughs> I think we just both want to feel a lot of love today, don't we? So we can have a relaxed conversation. And actually we want you to join in as well. So don't be shy, okay? We're going to sit down. You've got your phone there. Is, does that mean we're going to be doing like selfies and things like that? Oh, we have. <laughs> we definitely have. <laughs> Any takers? Any offers? <laughs> I'm not scared right. of a selfie. I must say, actually, the first time we met Winnie, we were thrust together in the most awkward scenario for a photo op. But it was a really happy accident because I had genuinely admired you. I've actually met you a few times. Which one was this? Well, this was at a party and we were oh. put together. <laughs> We've done a few of those together. Yes. <laughs> but that's an interesting thing, isn't it? I mean, who wouldn't want to take a picture? Well, we, we don't mind there. having a picture. Do we? <laughs> we, we, we don't mind a picture. And it was such a good meeting, I thought. And I really wanted to post a picture of you on Instagram. And then mm. I got starstruck of you thinking, she's going to think I'm really wacky and a bit desperate here. So I also must add that you were two years old when <laughs> I started my modeling career. <laughs> However, that does not mean that you haven't achieved an awful lot in a short Thank space you. of time. And I think many of you in here today would know Winnie's amazing collaboration with Beyonce. Yeah. And in the spirit of Women's International Women's Day this week, I think that's how you were really properly introduced to a mass audience. And that's where we all got to know you and, and feel you and be with you. So you have now become the role model and you are a global phenomenon. Is that crazy? I mean, how do you feel well, about being called a role model? Right? <laughs> we know how I feel so about being called a role model. Yeah. Um, for me, honestly, the, the term role model means someone to be um, imitated. And I don't feel like anyone is to be imitated. I feel yes. like I pull inspiration from everyone. And I feel like um, I'm honored and grateful mm -hmm. that people feel like they can pull inspiration from me, be inspired by me. Yeah. Um, but I definitely don't think I'm a role model. Like, I'm not someone to be um, <laughs> imitated. If you've, seen, if you've seen me... I love that hair ...party, <laughs> <laughs> you know this. <laughs> well, I think that's actually a very humble uh, state stance Thank to take. You. Because um, I think it feels like you're saying you don't presume that you are in a way to be copied or emulated and then perhaps in the same sense that takes the pressure off you because you're still developing you're learning you're growing I mean not to be patronizing but you're still at a pretty tender age you're yeah, 22 for sure. years I am old very young. come on and people and that's amazing yeah thank you you've done an awful lot and what I love about you is that you're not really easily categorized and that's a wonderful thing because I to me I you're am. a performer I think I try not to be great yeah. Good. <laughs> That's very refreshing. Good. I think we, I, I think people tend to categorize everyone. Yes. You know, everyone is, mm. is put into a box at some point of, yeah. their, of their lives. But I, I find that um, I'm always battling that. And I feel like that will always be my, my battle. Yes. But I'm happy to fight it. I, I get that about yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very empowering. It's great. So, to me, you're a performer. Thank you, you are willing and brave to try your hand at pretty much Oh my gosh, anything. is this interview going to be a bunch of compliments? <laughs> well, it should be. <laughs> I mean, this is all about you, Winnie Thank Harlow. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, Thank after you so all. Much. And so what else would you do? If you could collaborate on anything and with anyone, what would you want to do? Um, right now... I mean, forever, I've always been a lot about beauty and products and skincare and makeup. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I was to do a collaboration right now, I think it would have to do with skincare, beauty products, maybe makeup. Um, I'm really interested in the whole process, be it um, manufacturing, distribution, formulation, all that stuff. 
So you're a businesswoman, first and foremost, which is, of course, what we are, but people forget that. Yeah. And I think we're quite similar, and we've chatted quite a lot about the idea of... Actually, the most important ambition of all is to be self-sufficient. That is true independence, and that's a very empowering message, I think, for it lots is. of women and men in the audience today. So, I don't know, I mean... Do you want to collaborate with me? I mean, can we For get sure. can we, can we strong get something women. happening? Or yes. <laughs> so listen, you're also a spokesperson and you're an activist and you're a proud fashion model too, right? But did you ever for one moment imagine you'd be in the public eye or did it come as a complete surprise? Um, truth. Truth? Truth. I think it was always embedded in me that I was going to be something okay. from my mother especially. Um, and because of that, um, I think I wasn't very much so surprised when I became a model or mm. when I started gaining some fame. Ooh, who are those? <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even <laughs> see that. Um, that was the awkward that photo. That was the awkward photo. photo. <laughs> I was about, by the way, people. <laughs> It's a great way to make friends, though, because it is. I think we all assume that... We, we took that a good photo together, though, for not knowing each way. other. We don't look like we don't no, know each exactly. other. exactly. <laughs> it is a way, a bizarre way, albeit, of making friends with people. Because That's also often our job. You, yeah, you can feel quite shy. You can feel a little you're not sure of the other one, and it's a yeah. good way to come together. There's sometimes when you have to be with a guy that you've yes, never met that before. that you've never met before, and, and, and it's like, like intimacy in with love. a stranger is a funny old concept, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Um, sorry, we got off topic. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not unusual. That's really okay. So, so, so. Where, uh, your parents have been supportive. Yes, my mother. Especially. Um, she always thought I was going to be something. And I remember when I first started modeling, my dad was not for it. He wanted me to be in the military, and that's not... Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, modeling can be quite militant. I can appreciate way. it, though, because it was his way of having security for his children. Yeah. So, you know education, security, all this. Um, so I can appreciate the thought behind it. Yeah. Um, my mom, on the other hand, was like, you know what? A piece of advice that she got from her father mm. was, um, do what you love because you'll have to do it for the rest of your life. And Brilliant. this is something that she told to me from what her father told her. And my dad would be like, no, she could never be a model. That's like a one in a million thing. And my mom was like, she is one in a million. She <laughs> is Oprah. She is Beyonce. She could do it all. <laughs> so, thank you, mom. <laughs> I always think with dads, they're a bit afraid as well. Yes. And, and I think I on behalf of um, parents everywhere, when your child does something extraordinary, it's something that they haven't experienced for themselves. Yeah. And so, of course, there is a kind of reluctance as well as enthusiasm. But generally, I think moms do get a bit giddier because my, my mom is exactly the same. Yeah. You know, and so. it's, it, it kind of sucks sometimes because you feel like, ah, oh, Dad, why can't you just support me? But it really comes out of a loving place. Of course it does. So I'm yeah. happy that I understood that because a lot of times it seems yeah. like, just support me, just be yeah. for what I'm for. Yeah. But... I mean, More times than none, it's from a loving place. And do they have like a stash of almost stalker amount of magazines of you in their hands? My mom and does. And funny I enough, know. she doesn't like to buy any of them. She likes yeah. me to buy them for her. I mean, but she <laughs> should be getting them for free. She should be supporting me <laughs> buy them. I'm, I like to buy my own too. <laughs> Here's a funny anecdote. My mom has actually bought pictures of me um, that have been put onto fridge magnets and she keeps them on the fridge at home. That is so sweet. Like, oh my <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mom, Aaron's mom does this. <laughs> it's a competition. It's not a competition. <laughs> right, so we all now know what you do. What would you have done um, if you weren't doing Winnie Harlow? <laughs> what would your alternative career be? What were your passions growing up? I heard you were a ferocious reader. Is that true? Ferocious. Ferocious. Well, I was. I need to get back into it. But as a child, oh my goodness, books were like a Everything. getaway. Mm -hmm. It was like an adventure. Um, I was the child who was like always, not in the corner like at school, but at home. I would mm -hmm. be in my room, locked in my room in the corner by a nightlight, reading all night to the point where I couldn't get up for school the next day. Because you were knackered. 
I was so tired. Yeah. <laughs> but you knew more than everybody else at school anyway, presumably, by that point. Sorry, reading? <laughs> you knew more than anybody more. else at school because you'd you done all the reading. I know a lot of fun facts. Like, I know a lot of yeah. unnecessary information. Um, like, you know, like Uber facts, just like random things. But yes, That's it's like from That's like a party that. trick. It random is. facts. It's, it's kind it's of a sexy, party I like that. See me at a party and I'll, I'll tell yeah. you guys some facts. <laughs> <laughs> is that a promise? <laughs> it's a promise. <laughs> So we've both also had the pleasure of working with Nick Knight, and he's kind of beyond fashion photography. He's almost like a social commentator, isn't he? And, and just a pure artist And as well. a pure artist. Yeah. You can't really define him, and that, you're a match made in heaven, you two, because we can't define you either. And it's good to go through different roles, I think. I call him my fashion godfather. He is your fashion godfather. And he's also one of the best models in the world. It's uncanny. He is. Isn't he? He's... he's, he's the way he moves. Oh, okay, I just okay. End up, yes, yes, yes. I, I end up say, I, mirroring we, we need him. to take pictures together then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should be behind the camera with me. I've never seen this. Yeah, yeah. He's very graceful, though. He's very, like... He's beautiful mover. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Good person. And... <laughs> what are you laughing at the front row? Have you got a question? <laughs> so, what else? What do you do in real life? I always think these are the really interesting, meaty questions. What makes you happy? What is your style? What do you wear when you're actually not on the runway? Oh, what do I wear? <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you not wear? I mean, right, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am always in, like, sportswear, athleisure. Um, yeah always in sneakers and I feel like it gives me more um more will to go to the gym yeah if I'm already in yeah. gym clothes oh I know you know it's hard isn't it you know that. sometimes I'll yeah. put gym clothes on in the daytime and yeah. I won't ever end up at the gym though know. but you know and then you think well I've hoovered I've walked up and down the stairs quite a lot I mean you so know the balance is there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um what do I do yeah I love to be with friends and family that wow. makes me the happiest. Like, yeah. what makes me the, the most sad is being alone. Yes. And what makes me the most happy is being with friends and family. But then we're in the business of being constant nomads. Yes. We are always the guys on the road, singularly traveling to where the action is. Mm -hmm. And that's tough. So how do you combat that? I mean, what I love about your generation of girls is that you seem like real genuine friends and confidants. I mean, you've got quite a few supermod friends, let's face it. Yeah. I, um, I think I, I, I handle it by being on the phone with my best friend a, a like lot. Like, obnoxiously <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, I will FaceTime her. I will call her. Yeah. She gets, like, my late night calls, yeah. all of the above. I, I tend to be on the phone with her a lot. I'm actually trying to get her to travel with me, so hopefully that'll work. Cross your fingers for me, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> but she's sort of there with you everywhere if you've got her on Skype and things like that. Mm, it's not the same. It's not it's the not same. The I same. know. I'm just trying to help her because I feel you. I'm trying to help her argument. I feel you. <laughs> um, right. So, come on. Have you ever had any insane celebrity crushes? If so, who have they been? And have they ticked all your boxes in real life? No, I don't have any celebrity crushes, to be honest. No. I actually don't. Um, hmm. <laughs> no, I don't. I quite like that. I think so boys are cute, but yeah. I don't necessarily have, like, crushes. No. I think no. I have to meet someone and, like, experience their personality before yeah. I'm, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, cute is nice. Like, I can see them on Instagram and be like, oh, he's cute. Oh, he's lovely. But I don't necessarily have a crush until, like, I meet and then I'm, like... And you get chatting. But that's no, I get shy. I know. I get shy. It's easily done. Yeah. I see, you don't seem to be a person that suffers with shyness. No, but if, if, if there's a cute boy that I'm interested in, I mean, I look, that's, that's a universal <laughs> problem, isn't it, I think? Definitely. Am I the only one? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cute. And in terms of having mentors, then let's take away the crush and the boy element. Are there women that you look up to? And do you, have you, I mean, when you first started, for example, were there people that kind of took you under their wing? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that anyone specifically took me under their wing just because um, I feel like I 
was stomping a new ground that had not been tapped as of yet. So there wasn't yeah. anyone who was specifically taking me under their wing. Um, I definitely looked up to people though, you mm. know, um, one major person being Naomi Campbell, of course. I feel yeah. like that's... Me too. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. That's like a given. Um, yeah. And then I met Jordan Dunn yeah. um, later on in my career and I was absolutely infatuated with her. She's um, also of Jamaican descent. Mm -hmm. She's from South London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're both from more, you know, edgy areas of, of um, our cities. So more like comrades. Yeah, exactly. And, and women you love. Yeah, we, we, we meshed, we, we, we blended very well. So. Yeah, I mean, you sort of have your own fierce wings. I don't imagine you'd slip in under anybody else's anytime soon. Doesn't you didn't um, strike me as somebody that needs to do that? Not needs to, but even wants to sometimes yeah, maybe, you know, nice. it's, it's, it's nice to get, it's nice to have a wing. It's nice to give a wing and it's nice to have Yes. Good. <laughs> Absolutely. So in terms of shows and work, do you prefer runway or do you like print work? I prefer runway. Me too. Yeah. It's quick. Yeah. It's, it's over real yeah. quick. And um, it's quite exposing standing still. That whole static thing is terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's a lot harder than people like I know. think. Like I stink after a day of shooting. <laughs> it's like I've been working out like for a full day. Like yes. it's that much, yes. that much work. Um, but can you explain how you feel? Like, I mean, are you hiding in a port loo backstage before you go on? Or, or what, what, how does it feel? See, that's the hard trade-off because yeah. it's terrifying I being know. backstage. Just knowing that you're going to have to like walk mm. that, that runway by yourself. There's yeah. a possibility that you could trip. There is yeah. <laughs> um, a possibility that you could fall flat on your face in front of all these people and cameras and sometimes live cameras. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think a combination of determination and vanity will always keep you on your feet. For sure, though, 100%. Nobody wants to fall on their bottom in front of lots of people. It's But it's tough. also so exciting. And of then course. once it's over, you want to do it again. Yeah, of course. And what is the most bonkers show you've ever done? Like the most... Bonkers. That's yeah. a good word. It's bonkers. Um, I think the longest yeah. uh, runway that I've done so far was Marc Jacobs. Uh -huh. Which was very, very, <laughs> a very, very long um, catwalk. So that was yeah. crazy. And then we walked out and, and hung out in, in the winter cold in yeah. New York. Yes, so yes. that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> But brisk. it was amazing. Yeah, it was yeah. extremely brisk. But it yeah. was amazing, though. And it was such a beautiful show. Um, I think the show that I was maybe the least uh, nervous for would be, well, this season would be uh, Julia McDonald. Yes. And I feel like that was just because he gave me so much encouragement mm. and so much, um, like, love, you know, uh, during the fitting and during, like, right before the show. He was yes. like, I need you to give me beauty and goddess <laughs> and sex. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. So yeah. if you see my walk, that was why. <laughs> and he is about the most enthusiastic man. So enthusiastic. I love it. I, love I do it. too. Yeah, absolutely. So again... What is next for you? You've achieved so much. What do you want to do? What do I want to do? It's such a massive unfair question. It is. It's huge. Again, I would love to work um, in beauty products. I feel like yep. it's really um, highly anticipated, me, mm. like people knowing how I do my makeup. Yeah, um, I'd love that too. Yeah. And, um, and normally when you do see me with makeup on and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing my makeup today. Yep. I, I did not. I was blessed today. <laughs> but, um, but usually it is me who, who does my makeup. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do have kind of a love for makeup and beauty products. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to um, maybe do a Vogue cover one day or... Yeah, me too. Glamour <laughs> cover one day. <laughs> um, or even... Victoria's Secret, that's a big one. You, yes, that would be amazing to yeah. see you in a So goals, it's always Secret good to have show. goals and yep. aim for something. I think you need those goals though. I think if at any point you feel you've reached a plateau, then it's time to hang up exactly, your shoes. Exactly, exactly. So you are a success, but what actually does that word success mean to you? Personally, success. professionally? I feel like it means happiness. 
because if I, ha if I achieve, achievements and success I don't feel are, are exactly the same. No. If I achieve a bunch of things and I'm not, I'm not happy, that's not success to and me. It's not fulfilling. I haven't succeeded in my life. Yeah. Exactly, it's not fulfilling. So I feel like happiness. I feel like, once again, like my grandfather told my mother, my mother told me, do what you love because you have to do it for the rest of your life. That's so true. Yeah. And finally, in the business of beauty, which is why we're all here, <laughs> what does beauty mean to you, Winnie? Woo! Woo! Good question. <laughs> the big question. What does beauty mean to me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what does beauty mean to me? I feel like it means... I feel like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So... Yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter what beauty means to me. Yeah. What's beautiful to you is not what's going to be beautiful to me. So I'm just going to leave that one open. Do. <laughs> uh, actually, maybe you all want to join in. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure lots of you have got questions for Winnie. So, Winnie, <laughs> when you're ready, Are would you, you like to? Aww. I know, you look amazing. <laughs> I feel like you should just be sat up here and joining in. <laughs> We're going to get a microphone for you, actually. Okay. Right, um, this is the question we wanted to ask you, is what is the major hurdle you had to overcome in the industry, and why was it your major hurdle? I feel like coming into the industry, thank you. Yeah. I feel like coming into the industry, I, um, if you have any sort of thing that makes you stand out or um, difference, I feel like people automatically try to put you in a box, to like, find, we, like yes. we spoke about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like uh, initially climbing out of that box, I don't feel like I'm locked in that box so much anymore, but I do still feel like people try to put me in there. Um, but the initial getting out of that box, I feel was my biggest struggle mm. because I didn't feel like I fit in that box. And I feel like I relate to everyone and not just someone with vitiligo or someone who's, you know, I, I'm also a woman. I'm also a black woman. I'm also, um, I'm also so a, young, a young, you know, there's so many things to me that mm. don't have to do with my skin. So I feel mm. like I relate to so many more people than the boxes that people were trying to put me in. Great question, <laughs> by the way. You um, so essentially, I think having you in the spotlight has absolutely helped redefine beauty standards. Um, it's incredibly important. But do you think there's, because I think, or I, I think with you and others in the spotlight, there's been a shift in the beauty industry in terms of what we do find beautiful and how we, um, what we perceive as, as beauty. Do you feel that shift in, from the position of working in the industry? Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I definitely feel that shift. Um, actually, there was one point where I really felt that shift, although I've been feeling it. Um, recently, uh, I, well, actually, pr previously, I met this young girl named April, and um, she also has vitiligo. And um, I met her on, on a TV show in, in the States. They um, surprised her on this show with me. Um, hmm. Was it with Tyra? I think I've seen it. Sorry? Was it with uh, Tyra? No. No, okay. No, no, no. It was the real. Oh. Yeah. Um, and she, you know, she was really excited to meet me. She cried. I cried as well. <laughs> it was amazing. And she was like, you know, I aspire to be a model. And you inspire me. And you've been inspiring me. And I've seen her for a long time. I've seen her on Instagram. And I've, I've you know, posted her and all, all, all sorts. Um, and as, as of recently, she, she just did a, a Gap campaign. And I, um, I, was, I was so excited and so proud because that's something that I would have never seen as a child. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see me on, on these covers and everything, but once again, I am, I am 22, which is not old by any means, but to see a child with um, a, a hijab, or a, a, a child with vitiligo, or a child with, with freckles, it, it shows the change in the industry. You know, it's not just adults, which yes, we kind of have a, um, 
we kind of have a voice as adults to make changes, but children don't. So the fact mm. that our voices are now making changes for the children that are coming up is showing the change in the industry. One more question? Or Amazing yeah? answer. Are you? Yeah. Hi, I'm, I don't have a question. I just want to say as a one Jamaican woman to another, thank you for being here. It's <laughs> great to see you. And, you know, I think it's important. I have two daughters. Mm. And when I was growing up, I didn't see women like yourself so prominently in the industry or in media or anything. I'd just like to say thank you for coming to do the talk mm. and thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for coming. What a lovely way to finish. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, thank you. Because honestly, I can talk as much as I like, but this wouldn't be anything with you guys, so thank you for coming. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I think we should go get a drink. <laughs> right, let's go. Thank you for having us. We're, we're being booted off, so yes. Thank you.